ಕರುಣಾಕರ ಸೂರೀಂದ್ರ ಗುರುವರ್ಯ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಾಂ ನವನೀತ ನಟೋತ್ತಂ ಸಾಂ ಗುರು ಪಂಕ್ತಿ ಶ್ರೀಯನ್ನು ಮಹಾ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನಮ್ಮ ಆಳ್ವಾರ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ಲಿ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ನೆಸ್ ಪ್ರೊವೋಕ್ಸ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಟು ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಆಲ್ ಸೋಲ್ಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಹೌ ಅಟೈನ್ ಎಟರ್ನಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ಸ್ ಟು ಗೈಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಸೋಲ್ಸ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ the first step that he takes is to incarnate himself or come down as avataras the lord takes up many forms sometimes he takes up the form of a fish and calls himself as matsya avatara sometimes as a tortoise and calls himself kurma avatara sometimes he comes as a boar called divaraha or a man lion called narasimha he also takes up human forms like vamana parashurama rama and krishna all these incarnations have a single goal in mind and the goal is establishment of righteousness dharma which is the guiding light for eternal happiness the lord spreads a lot of teachings through these avataras some by his actions and some by his preachings the rama avatara is an exemplary story of how to live righteously in the krishna avatara the lord gives us a sermon about righteousness in the form of the bhagavad gita despite giving so many forms of teachings not all souls are able to follow it and get into the right path or the path of eternal happiness so the lord resorts to another means by which he can guide the souls towards the right path now what is this route in this route the lord thinks that maybe instead of me incarnating and mingling with people it would be good if a person of their kind a jeevatma can go down and mingle with them and try to teach them the right things because jeevatmas belong to the same kind so a jeevatma that the lord would be sending would be sajatiya to all the souls present in the universe whereas the lord himself was belonging to another class totally he was vijatiya so the lord decides to send sajatiya jeevatmas meaning souls like the ones in the world who are yet to attain eternal happiness or moksha so what kind of sajatiya souls did the lord want to send the lord decided to send his divine ornaments and divine weapons as incarnations down to the earth and they would show the right path to people so these divine ornaments and divine weapons of lord shriman narayana incarnated as the alvars the term alvar means the one who is engrossed in bhakti in devotion aand ponavar aalvar they say meaning the one who is deeply involved or engrossed in devotion so these divine ornaments and divine weapons came down as the divya suris or aalvars the divine weapons of the lord are called as divya yudhas and the divine ornaments are called divya abharanas so divya abharanas and divya ayudhas came down as divya suris the alvars the alvars are 12 in number 
and in their lot there is a lady yarwar very popularly known as andal this group of 12 varwars is headed by nammalwar nammalwar is considered to be the angi or the bearer the main framework and the other alwars are called as angas or parts of nammalwar himself meaning nammalwar is like a sharira and the other alwars are like the parts of that sharira or body so nammalwar is extremely important in shri vaishnava sampradaya he is the one who showed us the path of eternal happiness the path of eternal happiness or moksha is surrendering to the lord or doing prapatti and the one who does prapatti is called as a prapanna and nammalwar is the leader of the group of prapannas who were there at his time who are there now and who would be coming in future and so he is called as prapanna jana santana kutastar this nammalwar had a very glorious life which was filled with interesting incidents which we must know and learn a lot from them so now let us move on to the story of the incarnation of nammalwar what actually happened was way back in the beginning of this kali yuga in south india tamil nadu that portion of tamil nadu which is called as pandya nadu there is a very beautiful town called as tirukurugur or tirunagari this town is situated on the banks of the tamraparani river in this beautiful town there was a rich man named porkariyar who was very very devoted to divine service he had a son named kari or kariyar and they were as good as chief tains in that town porkariyar got his son married to the daughter of malaiman chief tain called tiruval marban now this malaiman is a place which is now known as tiruvan parisaram so at tiruvan parisaram tiruval marban was living with his daughter udayanangai and this udayanangai got married to kari who was the son of porkariyar kari and udayanangai were a very devoted couple and they were unfailingly serving the lord of tirukurugur who is also known as adipiran for a long time they remained issueless and they thought that it is divine will that they must go and pray for a divine child where did they go to pray they went to a divideshan which is further south known as tirukurungudi tirukurungudi is a wonderful place where the lord is known to listen to his devotees and answer them certainly so the couple went there praying for a divine child the lord came up much to the joy of the couple he was known to disappoint no one so he appeared immediately and he told the couple that he himself would come as their child what a blessing indeed who would think that the lord himself would come down to a couple they felt elated they felt blessed and they returned back to gurugur now once lord gave this word to 
காரி அண்ட் உடையநங்கை ஹி கால்ட் அவுட் டு ஆதிசேஷா அண்ட் டோல்ட் ஹிம் தட் ஓ ஆதிசேஷா நவ் யூ ஹாவ் அ டியூட்டி டு பி டூயிங் யூ ஹாவ் டு டேக் தி ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் அ டேமரின் ட்ரீ அண்ட் கோ அண்ட் ரிசைட் அட் திருக்குருகூர் you have to recite north to the sannidhi of adipiran and wait for something divine to happen adisesha obeyed and immediately took the form of a tamarind tree and went and placed himself in the northern part of tirukurugur temple people were wondering how suddenly this tamarind tree appeared here from nowhere but it was a lush green tree with some extraordinary beauty so everybody started revering that tree itself in due course of time udayanangai was expecting her baby and on the 43rd day of the current kali yuga in a pramadi year when the season was spring that is when it was vasanta rutu and when it was the month of vaishakha according to the solar calendar and when the tithi was pournami that is full moon day according to the lunar calendar and the star was vishakha the day of the week being friday a divine child was granted to udayanangai and kari this child has a divine look had a divine look on its face as soon as it appeared but unlike other children this child did not let out a cry on being born it was absolutely soundless much to the astonishment for of everybody around so udayanangai thought maybe if she feeds the baby it would start crying so she took up the baby in her arms and tried to feed the child the child wouldn't open its mouth it remained motionless but it had a beautiful look on its face which seemed to be full of life nobody knew what to do so they thought they would wait for a while before taking any decision and they put the newborn in a cradle they waited for a couple of days but the child continued to remain like that it continued to have its eyes closed mouth closed and remain motionless but to the great surprise of everybody the child seemed to be growing little by little a few days passed and kari somehow felt that there was some divine connect to the child for the lord himself had told them that he would come as their child so he was sure that this was some divinity which had appeared to them so he thought the divine should be taken to the divine so after a few days of the child's birth they took the child to the temple of tirukurugur and placed him near the sannidhi of adi pirhan the moment they did this the child suddenly got up crawled and went and sat near the tamarind tree this child who was absolutely not moving an inch actually crawled up to the tree and sat down there everybody was startled they definitely now felt that this child was a divine incarnation and they needed to respect him when all these things were happening at shri vaikuntha god is lakshmi got discussing with lord narayana she said oh lord this divine incarnation is either you yourself or some divine jeevatma sent by you i am sure she said 
as if she did not know what was happening whatever happens happens with the knowledge of both lakshmi and narayana because they are sarvagnyas they know everything but for the understanding of us they play leelas and so they they were playing a leela like this wherein lakshmi devi asked lord narayana and lord narayana said yes this is me also and this is our vishwaksena also so this particular child who has now taken an incarnation on earth is vishwaksena and in part lord narayana too this is what lord narayana answered lakshmi so lakshmi devi said in that case let us propagate our teachings through this divine child and for the propagation of teachings he need to he needs to be instructed so o lord let us command our commander in chief vishwaksena to go and give upadesha of these teachings to this child who is also an incarnation of vishwaksena vishwaksena agreed and went and gave upadesha or the teaching of the required mantras which need to be understood to propagate the path of righteousness the path of dharma and the path of moksha on receiving this upadesha there appeared a brahma teja on the face of the child he took up the padmasana posture had the jnana mudra on his right hand placed his left hand on his lap had his eyes closed body motionless his head and neck placed absolutely straight he looked like a picture perfect lamp this child who was so different from the world came to be known as the different one or maran maran means the one who is different this child had not lost the knowledge or jnana which every soul possesses when it is in the womb of its mother when a child is present in the womb of its mother it seems it knows everything of the past present and future it has a lot of jnana but the moment it is born it gets invaded by a particular source of wind called as shatha and once this wind vayu called shatha comes and touches a newborn the newborn forgets all that he or she knows all the jnana is lost but in case of maran he actually did not let shatha come near him when the shatha vayu tried to come and take over this newborn maran he uttered who with some anger because of which the vayu called shatha ran away because he made shatha run away and conquered him maran also came to be known as shatakopan so this is the story of the birth of the great namalwar also known as shatakopan and maran there are a lot of incidents which tell us the greatness of namalwar which we shall listen to in the next episode